Brilliant. So um, here we are at um, Time to Talk with Cognitive Sports Therapy. I am Dr. Claire and I am joined with Aaron Dr. Haz, um, or um, Dr. Hussein, um, to talk today about, I guess, lifestyle medicine and specifically in the world of primary care. Because I, I guess we were just talking before we came on, but my only connection with you um, is through social media. Um, but I see you very much as someone who is sort of walking the talk when it comes to lifestyle medicine. So you are a GP, sort of Leamington Spa area. Um, you are Royal College of GPs, lifestyle, physical activity champion, you are a run, talk, run regional leader. You are Swim England clinical advisor. You've got a few random jobs. Uh, you do that. have a lot of jobs in there. I kind of that's a different conversation, isn't it? How you pick it all, you put it all yeah. in, and and you do pack lunch. Um, uh, you're like a TV doctor as well, so yeah. you should be into. Well, not we should. I don't know. It feels funny interviewing the person. <laughs> no, it's um, but yeah, I think what I was hoping we would do with this. Space and we only do do these for 15 minutes so it's quite a, a fast um chat I guess I'd maybe just start off with just how you've ended up doing what you what you do do because I think that's interesting in it in itself how have you ended up where you are and doing all these different jobs yeah no it's uh it's an interesting one um and uh it's hard to really remember it always but I, I do sometimes sort of look back and try to think about where it all started uh, and I suspect it it came from my own personal journey, like about five years ago, uh, I was uh, quite overweight, I was inactive, um, I, 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 I desperately needed sort of a kick and it came in the uh, form of attending a, a practice meeting which was on Park Run uh, and our local Park Run had come in and were trying to encourage us to promote it more for our patients and so that coming Saturday, I decided to sort of take on myself to go down and see what it was like. And God, it was like one of the hardest experiences of my life. I never realized I hadn't run before. Like I genuinely, I'm like not in school and like I remember what kind of distances we did at school, but I hadn't run before. Uh, I gave it a go and it nearly died um, just trying <laughs> to cross the five kilometer line. Um, and that just made me realize that I had to do something about it. You know, you can't, I couldn't be 94 kilos and sedentary and, um, and giving advice to people for their health um, when I was nowhere near what we needed to be. So uh, I started trying to exercise more. Uh, I explored nutrition and, and really tried to improve my diet with sort of lots of small steps where I eventually, you know, it's, it's unrecognizable of where I am now to, to what I was then. And the benefits I gained from that led me to realize that I was missing a lot. I didn't realize, you know, I, I thought I had enough energy or, you know, my sleep was good enough or sure. you know, dietary levels were as controllable as they can be in this modern day and age. But going through that process, I realized that I was just so much better in all those respects. And a lot of the patients that come to see me were suffering from the same problems that I hadn't quite put my finger on back then. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I went on a journey to just try and learn more about about how I can motivate others to go on that same journey. So I get, I guess then my what I was hoping most of this conversation would be then is that, that how we spread that message and how we get more practices, I guess, doing what your practice does. So I, I again, this is social media, but you you look like you have a running group or a, and a lifestyle medicine clinic that runs through your practice. Yeah, yeah. So like the first thing that. Um, I said it was a uh, so like there's a walking, jogging, and running group. They all leave at the same time, and we have um, and those different groups for people with different abilities. Because absolutely, walking regularly is enough. We don't all have to do um, you know running and, and, and such like. So we have different groups with different abilities, and, and that started just as we were coming out of the first lockdown in COVID. Uh, we used to break off into groups of six in order to maintain the sort of rule of six as it was back then, um, and and that was fantastic. And I, I did it through an organization called Run Talk Run, who's a mental health charity that helped to sort of franchise all these groups. They help sort out your liability and your insurance and all that kind of stuff. They, they give you the training required to become a run leader. Um, and then, yeah, you start with that. And so I started with that um, and tried to encourage my patients to join me. And, and you know, I found it quite easy to get patients from the consultation room into the practice car park on a Tuesday evening 
because I was there. You know, I could simply say, why not come along? We can talk about this more. Uh, why not start with a walk? You know, and then, and then it was really nice to see their progress as many of them moved from, let's say, the walking group into the, the Caps to 5K group and then finally into sort of comfortable runners and, and seeing their stories and, and hearing about them and, and knowing them now. And, and many of them have achieved incredible things. It's just so motivating really motivating and, and I think a lot of it is is down to them realizing if you're speaking from a place of being really passionate about physical activity they buy in you know they simply buy in if, if you say it more as like a tick box exercise at the end of your consultation or you tell them about a leaflet or tell them about something they won't buy into that that they can tell when you really believe in it or not um, and so I found it really easy to get patients there um, yeah. While others often struggled, like I, definitely the vast majority of the people that come to the group tend to be from a small number of people and, and they tend to be clinicians that are really passionate about physical activity. Yeah. So it really led me to believe that that was crucial. You know, if you're not passionate about it, you're not going to manage to get people to make the changes. And I think the thing about your group as well, because I've thought about this and, and how we make it happen in practices, is that the only other w- place that it used to happen in general practice was like a diabetic clinic for example that kind of lifestyle education but what I often find myself saying to diabetics was this is the same um, information I would share with anybody in my practice so I'm not actually wanting you to um Mm take up a behavior which is odd or yeah. difficult or um, something that's restrictive, I guess, or something that should be painful or not enjoyable mm-hmm. because you have diabetes. This is like for everyone. So I, I think what's great about what you do is it's not run as part of that, is it? It's run open for everybody. everybody. Because, even, because what you're saying, because I ran a run to run group as well. And I guess it's that thing if it's not always even about your physical health, is it? It's also about your mental health. Mm-hmm. So you will yeah, have a really big around. priority on mental health, you know, and that's why we have that uh, group for experienced runners, because because you know even people that keep themselves physically well go through stresses and go through issues, and 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 there needs to be a space for everybody, regardless yeah. of their ability, both good or bad. Um, so you know, you you're fundamentally right. Well, I think the beauty of the group is the fact that it's combining yes, physical activity, but also community, which is really important, and many yeah. people living more and more isolated and not in sort of forming communities outside of their family or friends Uh, and also outside you know we make a real big point of going to natural space you know leaving the town where we start escaping into the little little sort of protected areas of nature and and we try to like theme the events so sometimes we'll do foraging one uh one run sometimes we'll try and focus on picking up you know changes that we see in let's say the flowers or the plants etc a lot of the guys that come along bring their own skills like we have you know dave who's just an incredible forager um he can pretty much sort out a meal every day that we go even in like the middle of winter um so uh, and it's just it's just nice nice seeing all these kind of different skills and learning i've learned so much from the last two years about sort of lemmington and about the local community the amount that people know um it's incredible and i think the thing as well that's really special about it is because i used to run with my patients and sometimes is that thing that people do feel more comfortable talking and sharing while they're moving and um you know sometimes they're able to maybe I suspect particularly if you're running with your own patients like GP patients that they are maybe it's those little moments that almost are missed in a 10 minute consultation that suddenly you maybe have more of an insight into someone what else is going on for someone it's Totally, totally. I'll just use the example yesterday because I, I do it on a Tuesday evening. And yesterday, uh, I was with a patient that I've, I've known for about maybe six, seven months. It hadn't ever come to a um, like one of the the groups that I run, but I had I'd spoken to him in the sort of traditional sense. Um, and like I hadn't seen him for two or three months, and and I had wondered really sort of what what had uh, gone on. And and during the walk, you know, in the conversations that we had in the consultations, I always felt very kind of rigid and, and I really struggled to open him up really to connect with him and, and yeah. get him because there's clearly stuff on his mind but during we went on a nice walk it was about 50 minutes long as part of the group and we sort of peeled off a little bit because because he wanted to sort of speak but he was just opening up in ways that he had never done um either over the phone or during a face-to-face console and 
And it was just amazing. And, and he was just talking about a lot of the issues that he has with addiction and a lot of the sort of steps that he's made and 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 some of the although I didn't feel like he was connecting with what I was saying and because so I advised him to join uh, this group called um, Foundry um, Health which is there's a local woods called Foundry Woods which uh, where they help people just interact with the woodland and they sort of help maintain the woodland and they use that as a sort of form of therapy like an yeah, therapy. yeah. Um, and, and he had listened to all those things and he had done them that's why he hadn't spoken to me for so many months because he was doing all those things wow. and making those sort of steps and like building up to the point where he felt comfortable to come to a walk um and be able to tell me that himself and and like moments like that just really help make work well you know worthwhile yeah and I get I guess then you know it is trying to work out how we make this something that is more accessible like you're sat in Leamington Spa my, someone's watching this going oh I live on the other end of the country why don't I have Dr Hussain so how, how do we, so you're set, you're going around the country with the Royal College of GPs, getting yes. people to sign up, tell Absolutely. us more. Absolutely, yeah, no, as part of the sort of RCGP Lifestyle and Physical Activity team, a big thing we're trying to push is the active practice movement. Um, and that is essentially signing up to a charter where you as a practice or as a primary care network or a group of practices look to try to embed physical activity um, and lifestyle into your care. And that could be not just for your patients, but for your staff as well, to maintain their own well-being. Um, and it's a very simple sign-up process. If you just Google RCGP Active Practice, it will take you to our sort of hub website where there's lots of resources on things you can do, either in your consultations or as a practice as a whole. Um, and there's lots of the organizations like Run to Run and the many others that will be there to support you for free um, in order to achieve those things. Because there are people like us in every practice and network, there just are. There's, that you can find that person and find the ones that are really passionate about it and give them the onus to lead things like this. Um, and you know, that is the thing, isn't it? There are, there's run talk runs across the country. So again, if you're not finding your practice, maybe signing up to something like this, you can find a run talk run if you kind of just Google them. And they're actually global now, aren't they? They're kind of all yeah. over the world, which is amazing. And I don't know, because you're a practice that's doing it. So obviously I know you you know what the first thing somebody's going to say is, I am overwhelmed as a GP at the minute. Mm -hmm. I am overworked. How on earth am I meant to find time to be doing this? So what, yeah. what do you say to the GPs, most yeah, GPs? Yeah, no, it's not easy. It's not easy. It. Like uh, the vast majority of sort of the work through the fitness club and the lifestyle clinic is done by myself. You know, like the, the, the practice doesn't take that um, as sort of workload because, as you say, you know, the workload is too high and, and the focus must be on the core service, of course. Um, but essentially I've dropped clinical sessions in sort of the traditional sense of the word in order to do lifestyle clinics and the fitness club activities now the fitness club stuff that i do that's all volunteered like it's all for free i do in my own time um sort of in the evenings on a tuesday but the lifestyle clinic is very gratefully funded through the um, primary care network so through the eight practices that that work in in the area of leamington um they fund not not very much you know it's just we, we we run a session every week for an hour and so i'm just funded for that hour and of course i put a lot more work then that into those kind of clinics with the sort of prep time and trying to keep it relevant and important. But you have to sometimes accept that in the early stages. And, and the key bit that I'm doing now and what I try to recommend for people watching, start small, um, build throughout the process and get evidence, you know, get evidence, prove that doing these kind of clinics has an impact, whether it be for diabetics and their control, whether it be for the people's mental health, well-being get the raw data, because when it comes to getting more funding, um, you can achieve that way. And so, so very recently, I managed to secure extra funding through the active partnership that works um, in my area. And so yeah. they're gonna help fund the clinics and, and let them grow to other PCNs in the area. So it takes time and it can be very frustrating at first, and you're gonna have to take maybe some of this in your own time and, and do it as a kind of area of interest. And then hopefully funding will follow. Yeah. But I mean, it has to, you know, it has to come out in outcomes. As you say, it, it's not hard to know that there will be evidence. It's just showing it, isn't it? Because I, exactly. you have I to think do that I, hard work to get yeah. that evidence. It will be there. It will be there, but you just have, you can't neglect that bit. Because I think I posted a few weeks ago about nutrition and I used to work in East London and we had a massive Bengali population with mm. very, very high numbers of diabetes. Yeah. 
and I went to additional diabetes training and I remember looking at the studies that showed that diet and exercise was more effective than any of the tablets we were giving our patients and I said to the speaker at the time and what so why do we give them the tablets? And the speaker said it's easier to give a tablet. And, there's lots and I of just think sometimes we don't enter into that. Not every patient is going to be the patient like yourself who goes out, loses weight, gets himself fit. Um, you know, not every patient is that patient, but there are a number of patients who I think need that information because it is life changing for them. And it's just, as you say, it's keeping going with that message, isn't it? So pick up the people who will take it on board and make those changes, particularly if they know that they've got the support of their GP behind them. And um, they know that, you know, if, if you don't have to take a tablet and you knew you could go out and do some behavioral changes to make that work. Yeah, no, absolutely. Why would absolutely. You know? I think if there's one take home that I would say for, for people that are watching this going, you know, I'd love to know more about lifestyle. It's, it's really crucial if you're going to be able to sell this to your patient, that you become an expert in lifestyle in the same way that we sort of study and become experts in, in drugs. And, and drugs are great and they have great purposes for single sort of uh, kind of indications, but lifestyle will help across the board in so many different ways. So we should also have a knowledge in that. And for me, it, it's, it's a process that you have to go on. You won't get it over in a number of days or weeks, but it'll take months and a few years. But what you learn from that, you actually get to often learn the base sort of physiology of the condition so much better um, and therefore you can give the advice to the patients better. Um, oh, yeah. Some like tips to get like, for example, nutrition, like Nutritank, give a lot of free um, lectures and, and sort of e-learning stuff that you can do with them. Uh, I recommend it. And that's focused on medical students and, and, and doctors. So I very much recommend kind of on that front. And also if you go on the RCGP Lifestyle and Physical Activity Hub, we have lots of resources there that you can read up on and, uh, and, and movement for medicine, for example, and yeah. all those kind of uh, websites are all linked from there if you want to access that and the, the british the society thing, of right? lifestyle medicine is really good as well the bslm oh, yeah. it's, it's, has got loads of really great stuff on there isn't that brilliant absolutely absolutely thank you for this this is 15 minutes gone it goes so fast what, yeah. tell me just really briefly at the end what races have you got coming up because that's the other thing you oh, do. What races have I got? I've, got, I've got a few i've got iceland marathon in... are you going to be okay you've got an injury yeah well done you do you are sharp yeah <laughs> So I got had a grade two soleus tear during a um, uh, an ultra marathon in Morocco, which yeah. was horrific. Um, <laughs> and it's taken so long to recover from. I cannot describe yeah. how long. I really thought it would take maybe five six weeks, but it's getting there. It's getting there. Okay. I definitely. And when's uh, Iceland? I'm, Sorry, when is the marathon? Iceland is uh, twenty something of August, so not that long to go. Um, and I'm definitely nowhere near like where I would be if i was sort of at peak but i'm just gonna have to aim to just run that safely if that makes sense yeah um, and then build for i've got a uh, half iron man in weymouth september nice. 18th and i've got the full iron man um at portugal in case case in case case uh, nice in october so those are kind of the biggest and obviously the london marathon which i'm looking forward to oh obviously the london marathon just threw that one <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. so yeah i'm just i'm just saying like i think on the bike I'm, I'm totally fine now the legs not causing any issues but running anything beyond sort of 15 16k at the moment it still aches it still aches in that bloody soleus but uh hopefully you just gotta be patient it them. comes together yeah, yeah. yeah. brilliant How about you? Thank Oh, me. Um, what have I got going? I've got a 70.3 in Mexico in November. Oh, nice, nice. Marathon in a tunnel in September. Marathon in a tunnel? Apparently it's a fast one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no wind. No wind and it's downhill, apparently. But anyway. <laughs> oh, Good luck. Thank you so much for coming on. And I always say at the end of this, if anyone's got any questions, please do message me and I can pass them on. Um, but it's been really great chatting to you finally. And um, I hope you have a nice evening. Take yeah, care. Same.